All right, hello. Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions YouTube vlog today. Let's say it's not even a vlog. I have been getting questions to go through my stash. Now, I'm privileged to have a very large stash. It's what I do with the money that I have left over. I buy yarn, it makes me happy. And I can't go through all of my stash at once. So what I was thinking of trying out is doing little like organizing, go through sections kind of videos because um, it's good for me to go through what I have, kind of um, refresh in my memory, which isn't the best. <laughs> And also just getting a bit more organized so that when I want to cast on something, I can just go and get it. I mainly knit from my stash. I'm not the kind of person who buys for a project to cast on the same day. I kind of buy things with some sort of intention and then I'll get back to it two years later. But I'll be ready to cast on. <laughs> so what I want to go through today is my sock stash. Now. For most people, they would probably only classify a half of my sock stash as sock stash, but I tend to knit with non-traditional yarns for my socks, so I do have a lot of yarns that are not intended for socks, but I'm going to use them for socks, so I'm including that, hence this is a lot of yarn to go through, so if you don't like looking at yarns and stash, I mean, most knitters do, but some get a bit overwhelmed and that's totally fine. This video is not for you. Please feel free to subscribe and come back for the regular podcast episodes, which I do call podcast in the title, which this will not. I, I just need to slow down. I went through my yarn room and got everything from every corner out that is potentially sock yarn, so I'm a bit flustered. <laughs> So here you can see pre-organizing the big mess of all potential sock bases and um, this is what we're going to be sorting through. When I'm ready. Okay. So um, let's roll up our sleeves and get into this. I have a huge box of yarns from my closet. Yes, I have closets in my yarn room, which are yarn closets. Uh, some yarn I keep out and about, like cones and such, and uh, my mini wall from Advents hanging there. Uh, I have a cabinet for my wound cakes. That's kind of pretty to look at and easy to grab for a project. But then I have a lot of yarn in my closet in plastic boxes and bags, which are more for uh, long-term storage, something that I don't pick out something from daily. Oh, the sun's out for five minutes. <laughs> That's fine, better lighting. But in here, there is a mix of sock yarns and miscellaneous other yarns. So I am going to throw out the stuff that's not for socks and then I'll put sock yarns in here. Um, as well as some baskets to keep about for the prettier ones. So, let's see. On top of this, I immediately see that I do have a lot of Arauma Fienel lying there, which is yarn that I am using for my square blanket. Now, I'm currently knitting on the square blanket with the Arauma Fienel, so this really has no use being in this box. So I'm going to take those out and put it in my um, blanket basket that I have in the living room. So those we're just going to throw over there. Now, if the ball bands fall off, that's fine. I'm not keeping track of the the numbers of the colors and I know how Rama Fino looks and feels. So I'm not worried about getting confused with what kind of balls those are. Now, the next thing that I can see is in the next layer of this box is some Rauma Vams. Now this is 
83 meters per 50 grams. It's 100% Norwegian yol wool, 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 wool. And this is used for felting. At least I use this for felting. It is very um, loosely spun, fluffy, airy yarn. Great for felting. Now I knit slippers with these. I'll get the slippers to show. Oh, the sun is bright. I just so happen to have my slippers in my yarn room. And the microphone is giving us shade today. But yes, these are the slippers. The sun's gonna be gone in very little time. So we're just gonna make do. So these are double knitted felted slippers and I have, I don't know how much I have. I think I have enough for a pair in this colorway, which is the color 413. And I have enough in the lighter colorway, which is color number three. And I think this is it. This is what I have in here. So I have four of the light color and four of the brown. And then this one is left over from probably my pair that I just showed. If I'm not completely mistaken, I might be mistaken. It might be the same or it might be slightly different. It might be slightly different. Maybe this is for Matisse's uh, slippers, which by the way, he managed to wear massive holes through them, like it's double felted, and I don't understand how he's that hard wearing, but I have to make him another pair, so I think I will leave this color somewhere where I can see it so that I can motivate myself to actually make him another pair. So it's motivating to make him a pair because he, ha he wears them daily, but it's demotivating to make him a pair because he destroyed them which kind of hurts my knitting heart, but yes. Oh, there it's clouds, it's getting better. So yeah, I'm gonna take these four and put them there, ready to be used. Um, maybe I will keep these out as well, just in case his size needs five balls, then I can use this for the inside of the foot. I don't want to make him a light colored pair because, like I said, he's way too hard wearing and I know that he's been using them outside in the garage, which is a no-no, but I have found evidence of it. Now this is then an odd skein. I don't know where, where to put it. I need to make a system for odd skeins in my stash, so I'll just throw it on the floor, figure it out later. Okay. Next, there's a little bit more of the Ramafinal, which is left over from the jacket that I made, but maybe this can be used for the blanket as well. So over there, we're getting closer to the sock yarns. Um, there is a county skein in here. I could use this for socks, but I have three of it. I would use it with a silk mohair then because it's 100% wool. So I think I'll put this with the other two and use it for a blanket or garment or something. Now we're getting there, we're getting there. Sock yarns. So this is some Isayer sock yarn that I bought in December, November, December. And this is Easy Wash Alpaca, 40%, and Easy Wash Merino, 40%, and then 20% recycled nylon. So this I can use holding it on its own, and I'm intending, because I have 150 gram, I'm intending to do with contrasting um, cuffs, heels, and toes. And I don't mind that it's a light color. The socks don't get that dirty, because I wear them inside and no shoes are used inside, so... I don't mind it and that's what I'm planning on making. So these are staying in the box. I probably should have emptied the box first so I can put them back in. <sighs> I may get 
my life difficult. <laughs> I don't want to throw these on the floor. What to do? And apparently I'm not able to make decisions today, so I will just put them on the floor and then clean up later then, I guess. This is a sock yarn in my stash that I'm not really wanting to knit with. Um, I might use it for gifts though. I just touching it, it's making me go ee. Uh, this is definitely superwash. <laughs> this is Yarbo, Swedish. It's called Mellan Ragi, traditional Nordic sock yarn, 260 meters to 100 grams. It's like a DK weight. Um, I'm not loving the feel of this. 75% superwash wool and 25% polyamide. Um, so, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll knit something with a gift or maybe I will gift this to my grandmother. I know she's knit with it before and she doesn't mind the feel of it, so... Maybe that's what I'll do with it, but it's going back into the sock box for now. This yarn, I love knitting with this. This is the Mondime sock yarn. Uh, this is the color 205, so this reminds me of like raspberry and cream. Now, I am more of a solid person, um, but this is really beautiful and I do love the yarn. I made myself a pair of socks with it. It felt really nice. This is 100% wool. There's no nylon. It's non-superwash. And I love that kind of yarn on my feet. Um, so much better than any sock with nylon content for me personally. It's just breathable and warm without being like icky. So I want to make more pairs. I did felt them though. Somehow they were in the leg of my pants and it got into the washing machine. So the pair that I had felt it. I instantly like dragged them onto my feet by force so I can wear them, but they are really tight. Um, so making more is on my list. And I have actually two, two Mundine um, balls of yarn, if you will. It's 100 gram balls, if I remember. Does it say? Yeah, 100 grams, 385 meters. Oh, the sun, beautiful. So yeah, I really, really like this yarn for socks. There has been um, a lot of different opinions on this yarn. Some people find it wears really well and some find that it wears holes really quickly. Uh, not sure if that is related to um, the yarn or the person or how people wear their socks. I haven't gotten holes in them. I felted them and I still wear them. I'm gonna make more. I like them. I haven't had a bad experience with it apart from my own mistake of felting them. But that also adds strength. You could pair it with a silk mohair if you're worried or reinforce the heel and toes with a nylon thread. That is also possible. Now, what else do we have in here? I think I'm gonna pick it up and see. This is Raumagan Vandre, which I think they released a year or two ago. It's a sock base of theirs, which it's like a DK, I would say. It's 100% wool, non-superwash, non-nylon. It's quite hard. Uh, I did not enjoy knitting with it. It was rough to knit with might be my fault of knitting with too small of a needle size. Um, I have made a pair of socks, or I have made one socks with it in white and green, held with silk mohair, which is kind of like a Christmas stocking. Now, since knitting that, I have found another ball of the white, so I can finish the pair if I want to. I just haven't decided. But I think I will throw this one somewhere in here I have project bag with a sock that I started knitting with this color so I think I'll throw this in with that I might rip back just because it was way too tight to knit with and I'm a process knitter and it's a pain so I'm not gonna finish it if I'm honest so I'm gonna throw that over to where that project bag is hiding and I found some Arama phenol in here going over there now next I have a ball of the Regia 
Perfect Design Line from Arne and Carlos. So this I bought on sale. It's one of those, let me see here, one of those self-striping patterns. So there's a yellow thread or if you start knitting from that and then halfway through the skein, there's another one. So if you start knitting from that for the second sock, they should be identical. Uh, this I think is a hundred grams again. It's fingering weight, 420 meters. And this is 75% wool and 25% polyamide. Um, I don't know if it says on here if it's uh, superwash, but it says it's machine washable and it feels like superwash. Again, not my favorite to knit with, but I might knit it up for some um, Christmassy socks or gift socks in the future. So this will be going back into the sock box. I have some Arweta, which is 100% wool. No, it's not. I lie. It's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. A lot of people have been using Arweta in the past years for their designs. I know that uh, Laura from Penrose Knits is a fan of this yarn. And I have knit with it in the past for the Oslo hat from Petite Knit. Um, but this would be a great sock yarn. I mean, it is a sock yarn, wool and nylon blend. So this is what I have left over from a project. Uh, I have quite a bit left over, actually a full and a half. So I'm thinking of making socks with this, um, either on its own or held with silk mohair. So this is staying in the sock box. Then I have this color in the Focalana and I have five skeins of this. So when I got this, I got this to be used for a like lightweight sweater or summer top. But I have since become unsure if I want a superwash garment with nylon content, or if I will just use this for accessories, including socks. So that's why they have made their way into the sock box. But I do love the color. But yeah, I haven't been decided, but they're staying in the sock box for now could get several pairs of socks out of this. I'm not sure if they're all the same lot because I think I might have bought one of them on its own. No, they're the same. No, I lied. That was the same color. Of course it's the same color. Ugh, I confuse myself. No, I think I got all of these together. They're the same lot. Yes. I also have one in this color of the Filcolana, which is the 97 one. So this also was left over from an Oslo hat and I'm thinking of doing socks. I actually used, um, I actually used this yarn for a sample of, or a pair of my own sock patterns that I knit up, the Moose Hell. And it does actually feel really nice and soft on the feet. Um, so it's one of those super yarns that are not like very super washy, if, if that makes sense. It's um, not as squeaky to knit with. So it's, um, it's one of the nicer ones. Oh, and another one. This was also an Oslo hat and I have one left over going into the sock box for sure. Now we're getting into the bottom. I have another Regia. This is the Stretch Uni and Color. Sorry about the lighting. There is like a slight little spot between like the mountain and my neighbor's house. And somehow I managed to record in that tiny little slot during the day where the sun rarely shows up. So, sorry. This is just a white color. And I think I got this one. Sorry, I'm not going to look into the sun. I got this one to use for contrast um, with other sock yarns, just a plain fingering white. Um, so yeah, that's why I got it. Not to make a completely white pair of socks, but to combine it with others for either color work or 
contrasting heel cuff and toes. This again is super wash. It's not feeling as super washy as the um, self patterning one. I don't know why that is. I'm pretty sure it's 70% it's wool, 23% polyamide, 7% polyester. So I don't know, maybe the polyester is what gives it a bit of stretch. Although wool is also stretchy, so I don't know. But it's staying. Then I have some Vikingan Sportsdrag. So this is another Norwegian commercial brand. Um, I think I got this when I was visiting someone and I was worried I didn't have enough yarn and I got this at the grocery store because they sometimes sell this at the grocery store. And it's 70 fry, no. This is 40% alpaca, super fine, 40% merino. And 20% nylon. It's quite soft. Um, 50 gram balls. And I'm not sure if it's superwash or not. Because it doesn't say. I'm assuming it's, it probably is. But I'm not. I'm actually not sure. I have these three. And I think they are the three that I have, these three colors. So I could get a pair of these together. I could do stripes. I don't know. Probably be used for gifts, but it's staying in the box. Some more Rauma. Then I have, this is looking messy. This is Old Stash. This is Drops. Fabel, which is a superwash treated sock wool. It's 75% um, wool and 25% polyamide. And I have two balls of this. Pretty sure it's the same. Yeah, I bought these together. Just a plain, like light gray sock yarn. And um, yeah, gonna be used for socks someday. Might be used for heel cuffs and toes for some other yarns, who knows. Um, this has the uh, polyamide content to add strength, so if I have some other fancy yarn but I want something stronger for the heel cuff and toes, I can use this. And then I have another self-striping yarn in here. This is Yes Subgarn, another Norwegian commercial yarn brand. We have a lot of those. <laughs> A lot of people knit in Norway. I saw um, an article where they said that one third of women in Norway knit. I don't know if that's true and how much uh, is classified as knitting or if it's just knowing how to knit, but it says that one third knit. So that's quite a lot. Uh, this is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. Again, doesn't feel the best um but it's fun yarn it's great for gifts and i do like the colors so staying in here i'm saying staying as if i'll throw anything out i'm not gonna throw anything out i just will try and organize it so that sock yarn yarn intended for socks are in here and then if there's anything not intended it's going somewhere else that's what i mean by staying I have some Drops Nord mix. This is 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide, and 25% wool. Now, um, this could be used for socks. However, alpaca content has more drape. Um, so it's really nice and soft, but I'm not sure it's what I want for socks because I don't want the socks to be drapey, kind of, if you know what I mean. So I'm not sure if they will be used for socks or not. I have three, three of them, four of them, I think, five. <laughs> I, see, I have another drops on yarn in here with the exact same color as this, so that's why I'm confused, but yeah, I have four, four balls, five balls, I can't even count, 
I have five balls of the Drops Nord. Um, they would be really pretty together for socks. But I am a bit unsure about how the alpaca will behave in socks. If any one of you have knit socks with Drops Nord, please feel free to share your experience with it. Um, but it's a nice fingering weight yarn. It could be nice for accessories that are not socks as well, of course. Um, I think I will keep them in here for now because I don't have another use for them except for socks, right now at least. I found another Drops Fable in a light color that had hidden away. So I have then two light grays and one white in the Drops Fable. I found two more uh, Arvetta from Filcolana, leftovers from Oslo hats. So they're staying. This is the same color as the other one. So this is the one that I believed I had bought separately. And here it is. I was not completely off. This I bought at a grocery store. This is actually a label from the food grocery store co-op. <laughs> this is the Muk Frost Ragigarn. It's a sock yarn that's 80% wool, 20% nylon. This is a thicker, like a DK, um, DK worsted. Not completely sure if I would even get, it's like 100 meters. I'm not sure I could get a pair of socks out of this, but I could use it with some other yarns that I have. If I have some thicker yarns, I could combine it and that will be enough. So this is staying. Now, I'm not sure why this is in this box. Maybe this was in this box before other yarns made it into this box. This is some old, old stash yarn. I have had this for more than six years. <laughs> I had this when I studied in Poland. I bought this in Złotys, the currency in Poland. I have, how many do I have? Three, four, five, six, six. I have eight balls of this drops alpaca. This is very nice and soft to touch. I bought this, I think intending to make a sweater with it and I just haven't. But um, that definitely is something that I would make with this yarn. So this is take is taking the that. I'm taking this out of the box and putting it somewhere with um, sweater quantities. This is 100% um, alpaca content. So it would be used for something with a nice drape. It could be used for a shawl as well, but I do think I want to make a garment with it. And I should have enough to make a garment with it. So this needs to be put somewhere else. Where? Where? I'm just gonna... Okay, empty box. We can now put yarns in here. So I'm just gonna throw the yarns that we've gone through back in. Okay, so a little less than half a box filled. Now we're gonna be putting more yarns into this box because I have more next to me right here. Okay. Now, I have another basket with a mix of things. So I have this Regia Tweed colorway. This is a six ply sock yarn. Again, machine washable, so super wash. But this one does not feel, it doesn't feel too bad. Um, not that super wash is bad, it's just how I feel things um, and my preferences. This tweed is 150 grams to the ball, so it's quite a lot of yarn in here. I can probably get two pairs out of this. And what else? It's 375 meters to all of this. And I have two of it, two different colors. So there's the, the creamy one with the brown and black naps. And then there's this one, which is really pretty. It's like a charcoal with burgundy and rust nips. 
these are really pretty and I really want to make socks with these. So I'm gonna put this like somewhat on top in my box of yarns. I have some more Arweta. I made a very bright Oslo hat for myself that I use when I go skiing. And I have two balls, skeins. I, what do you even call these elongated balls? I have two left. Um, I think I bought extra besides the hat to make socks. So these are going to be some red socks. And I have one ball of Tilia, the silk mohair from Fircolana, to pair with it. Because I want them to be fluffy bed socks for Christmas time. And here is what I have left from making. Uh, with the tweed, I made a pair for think one of my brothers received it. So I have quite a bit left. Uh, should be enough to make a pair for me, uh, especially if I do contrasting heel cuffs and toes. So yes, that's going back in here as a full sock quantity. This is what I have left of the, I think it's the Hearth sock base from Emma, from Woolly Mammoth. Fibers, indie dyed yarn, really pretty. I'm putting this back in here. It's not enough to make a full, full pair. So maybe I shouldn't put in it. Maybe I should make an own system with, um, with leftover sock yarns to use sort of like minis. So I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll have like full possibilities of socks in here and leftovers somewhere else. This mystery ball is some Malabrigo, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. I feel like the color is coffee. Very, very old yarn. I This is some of the first yarn that I got when I studied in Poland. I used it for a Jennifer Steingast sweater for a little bit of contrast. I think I used a bit of it in my Vertices Unite. It was definitely considered to be used for it. I have quite a bit, this is quite densely balled up. Uh, I do feel like this has a nylon content. I feel like it's superwash. This would be enough for socks, a pair of socks. I'm putting this, I'm putting this in here. Or am I? Mm. Everything in here is commercial right now. So maybe I should this with the scraps for like fancier yarns. I should have figured out my system before I started recording this. So welcome to the chaos that is me. This is the leftovers Mondim that I have from the pair that I made. Now this should be enough to make another pair, at least with contrasting heel cuffs and toes. So. I'm putting this in here. There, we made a decision. This, I believe, is Regia, the sock blend which contains yak. It's a beautiful yarn. I've knit with it before and I will be knitting with it again. I'm putting this in here. Don't have the ball band, but I remember it and I can look back on this video 10 years from now when my memory is gone. No, it's not going to be gone, but it's not going to be <laughs> up to date. Here as well, some Malabrigo superwash, probably nylon content. Don't remember. Um, I used this for that sweater that I knit of Jennifer Steingast all those years ago. So putting this in the window for now until I can figure out a system for them. Um, actually, I'm going to put this back down, I think, or, hmm, decisions. All right. This is the crate that I have with leftover sock yarns. So maybe I will put just my, my leftover sock yarns back in here. Now this 
is um, Slamis Garn, their, their new sock yarn, which has some alpaca content in it. And that worked well for socks. Um, I knit a pair for my brother using these two colorways and these are just tiny little scraps that I have left. Like this can't even be used for anything unless there's a tiny bit of color work, but I have kept it, so. I will probably put this back into the crate here. What else do I have? This feels like the Vandre, the sock base from Rauma. So I'm gonna throw this over to the, where, where that is. Um, let's see what else I have here. This is some of those um, self-striping commercial yarns. Made a pair for one of my brothers, have quite a bit left, not enough for a full pair. So I'll put this with my other scraps. This is some Sakami uh, fluff, fluff, sock fluff, fluff, um, leftovers from a sweater project that I did. I'm gonna put that with my other scraps as well. I have one ball, why is this in here? <laughs> one ball of knitting for olive compatible cashmere left over from a project. This is, this has to go somewhere else. This is not gonna be put into socks. We're not that fancy. Self-striping sock yarn. Use this for a gift from my brothers. More self-striping sock yarn used for a gift. And this I used for a pair of socks last year. This is Hedgehog Fibers. Um, I have enough here to make another pair if I want to. This is superwash, it's got nylon content. I really, really, really like the really bright, beautiful orange. They work really well together and it's just beautiful. So that's going back in. I think I might actually take the commercial ones and I'll put them in, or will I? Why can't I decide? Later. <laughs> uh, this yarn, I don't remember the name of this yarn. I got this in London. I made the Gru socks by Fiber Tales last year. And those socks are just beautiful. They're really nice and soft. I think there is a cashmere content to this sock base. Uh, it's really nice and squishy. And then, let's see, more yarns. I believe this is the colorway Hagrid from Stripey Cat Yarns. I made a pair of socks and I have enough for another pair, pretty sure. I might make a sock tube and use it up for that. So that's definitely staying. This I wonder if this might be some Madeline Tosh yarns. I knit up a pair of socks holding it with um, silk mohair that I gifted to my brother's girlfriend two Christmases ago and she loved them. So I have a bit left here. It could be used for contrasting heel cuffs and toes. Some more tiny scraps of self-striping. A little bit of cotton in here. That's definitely going somewhere else. Then, oops, I'm losing things. Uh, this is some Sakami. I used this for a top. Uh, the base is 50% baby alpaca, 25% linen, and 25% silk. This is the Protea Grandiceps. Now I used this for a top. It's really nice and soft. It's more of a summery yarn. It does have a silk content, so it could be used for socks. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to use it for socks. I might just make some other lighter summery tops with it instead. So I think I'm gonna take this out and use it for something else. More cotton that's going out. 
and this is some yarn that I was gifted two years ago. Um, Arctic Yarns, I believe, is her handle still. If it's not, I will put the right, correct handle here. And I use this to make a top. And I have quite a bit left, and it does have a nylon content. So I'm thinking of making socks with the remainder of what I have. So now I can put things back into my box. And as you can see, I'm so organized. I have a label on it, and I've owned this for years. But when it's in the back, you don't see it. But I'll take it off now. That's like something that I tend to do subconsciously. I just don't take tags off of things. I don't know why. I never return anything. It just laziness, I guess. Or maybe it's because it's so hard to get it off. I think I need scissors for this. Luckily, I have scissors in my knitting room. Alright, so I think it's safe to, I have some tiny little mini balls that has escaped. This could be used for some tiny color work. See, I'm saving, I'm saving all the things. Who knows if I'll ever get around to using up these tiny, tiny, tiny scraps, but I have them if I need them. No, nothing goes to waste. Okay. So I'm just going to put the stuff back in and go on to the next yarn stash, sock stash that's been accumulating. I actually have another basket of scraps from projects and some of the scraps in there are sock yarns or that I would like to use for sock. This one is has zero nylon. This is a superwash merino, but I've used it for socks and I'm going to continue using it with socks together with the silk mohair. So I'm putting it in here as well as this scrap of something going in here. So this will continue to be filled up in the future. Next, what I have left is a bunch of hanks that has not been wound up and a basket of mohair leftovers. So singular skeins or leftovers from a project that's not enough to make a garment that I am thinking of putting into socks because I just love the when the le. I love the sock that I've made with a silk mohair strand. It instantly makes the socks thicker. So instead of knitting on 2.25, I can knit with three millimeter needles, for example. It's nice and squishy on the feet. It's really warm and it adds strength so and softness. So after converting to that, that's what all my odd bits and ends of mohair has been set aside for. And maybe we should go through the hanks. I do want to wind up some of them. Um, I think I'll just start on top because it's a mess. This right here, I bought this in Turkey this summer. This is Ghazal, which is a Turkish brand. This is called Happy Feet. This is the hand-painted forest knight. 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide. Now, it was not, I mean, when I was in the store, there wasn't really a lot of yarns that was 100% wool or non-superwash. It's a lot of, it's a lot of acrylics there. 
I just really 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 liked the colorways and it doesn't feel too squeaky um, so this is going to be really interesting to see how this knits up I think um, this will be a nice sock yarn to gift as a knitted pair of socks because it's easy for the receiver to tend to so that's what this might just become and I got some more from that store this is the Feza hand dyed yarn in the in an ombre color it's 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide again this color is just really fun it's not my typical color if you will but it is really nice and pretty and I think it's gonna be a fun thing to knit on in like spring summer which is when I am drawn to bright happy colors but probably again something that will be gifted once knitted and I do enjoy now knitting tubes with cuffs and toes and then cutting in heels later on so that's great for gifts because then you can figure out who the receiver is and add the heel to fit their feet later on so I think that's what I'm going to do with those yarns that I intend to gift is just knit tubes and add the heels later one more I got from there is this color which is also really nice and happy and bright and this one is it's it's a brighter version of what I usually like orange um, this is the Ghazal Happy Feet hand painted again. So it's the same, same base as this, but this one kind of became a mess. So I did this to it. <laughs> and yeah, 75% superwash marine and 25% polyamide. And yeah, so again, it's gonna be some nice gifts. And then I have just gonna pick whatever's on top. I did get some fjord bases from Hillesvog uh, to use for socks. I really like this. This is 100% uh, wool. No, it's not. I lie again, but it's not super wash. This is 80% wool and 20% nylon. So this is their sock base intended for socks. It's non super wash though, so the receiver would have to either hand wash them or use a wool program with uh, like 30 Celsius and wool soap so that it doesn't felt. I got these four colorways, very much um, muted brown earthy tones. And I was thinking of kind of um, combining them with contrasting heel cuffs and toes because I like the look of that. And I might pair it with silk mohair to soften it up and uh, just make it fluffy and nice. So I might do that. I have Some silk mohair cones now that would be great to pair uh, Wouldn't worry about it running out. I have plenty so I might keep them. I might get them making sock tubes probably So I'm gonna cake these ones up and put them in my cabinet of where I have the shelf of sock yarns because I have other um, colorways in this base there, so I'm gonna put them with those. And then I have, let's see, this is not. Then I have this singular skein, which I was gifted. This is the Pospes, and it's 370 meters to 100 grams. It's uh, dyed by Alfinette. Alfinet. Am I butchering that name? This is the, the tag, so you can read it for yourself and pronounce it in your own head. So this is gonna be used for a beautiful pair of socks, maybe with um, a white contrasting cuff heels and toes. I think that would be really pretty. So this is going in here. I have this this is was also gifted this is the lux non superwash in the color rust this is the lux high twist which is 100 percent fine merino organic non superwash and this is the rust color 
deluxe high twist, 100% fine merino organic, non superwash, and this is just a really really pretty one. And I might just pair this with a silk mohair and use it for socks. I do have some odd um, skeins leftovers in silk mohair that would look really really pretty with this one. So that's what I think I'm gonna make. And then I have some Crooks fibers. Now this is from her advent two years ago, so her 2021 Christmas advent, and this was the final, final skein. This is dyed by Brittany. She also has a podcast, so you should check her out. She's really lovely, and uh, she makes beautiful colorways, and she has some unspun that I really want to try. Uh, so this I will be using for um, a pair of socks. The color is You Are Welcome Here. It's 100% Blue Face Lester. So it doesn't have a nylon content, but the fiber in this is supposed to be um, good for use, good for knitting socks with. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that is. I also have this from her, which is um, the same base, the Blue Face Lester and some minis and I really want to do either some color work with this or contrasting heel cuffs and toes in different colors. I think that could be really, really fun. And whatever I have left over, I could pair with this color. Yes, or maybe stripes. So many good things. So many good things. And then I have this base from Wollenswein, Yule. She also has a podcast. She's lovely. Uh, she's a plant dyer based in the north of Germany. This is the limited edition base, number four. It's 100% local Romney sheep. It's a woolen spun two ply and this is the undyed. I'm not sure why I got the undyed. I think, I mean, I do have some intentions of trying to dye myself, so I might just do that. This is definitely a, like a yellow toned sheep wool. So it's not bleached or anything. Um, it's really pretty. It has a bit of, of grass and stuff in it. I bought some more yarns from her in that batch, which will show up eventually somewhere in here. But I'm not sure if I will be using this for socks though. Romney sheep to play. I have to go back and look at her podcast if she intended this as a sock yarn or not. So I'll put this on hold for now. I have some woolly mammoth that I got. I think I have three of this. This is the natural sock or maybe I have just one of this. I got this colorway in two different bases. This is the natural sock, which is 50% BFL and 50% Cheviot wool. And the color is Jasmine, lot number three. So it's a fingering weight and it's just really pretty. And I want to use this for socks, probably with some contrasting heels, cuff and toes. Um, this is, so I'm gonna put that in the sock bin. This is from Jula from Wollentwein. This is the Romney again. And this is the lavender colorway. So maybe I might have gotten this to use as a contrasting heel cuffs and toes for this. I feel like that's something I would do. And I do also feel like I am picking colors that I don't normally pick for garments. I pick them for socks. <laughs> because that's a way to kind of wear colors that I normally don't feel like suit me next to my face, but I can still wear them on my feet. I actually am currently knitting on a sweater in very similar colors, but besides that one, I don't really use these um, grayish purple pinks that much. So if I intended to use this for socks, they're going in the sock bin, but I do have to check Yula's podcast. So putting them aside for now. This was a gifted yarn, uh, Aya Fibers. 
in the straw flower. This from, was from her advent calendar in 2021. 85% lamb's wool, 15% linen, 400 meters. Now, um, so the linen is quite interesting. It definitely kind of makes the yarn feel harder, but linen will usually soften up with washing. I have one skein of this, so I am thinking of making socks with it, but adding a silk mohair for strength, I think. Then I have this, the Isaloni. This is the Capra Twist Fingering in the color Puffins. This is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. This is just so pretty. This is so pretty. I love these colors. This will probably just be a pair of socks for me, if I'm honest with myself here. Uh, I have quite a bit of uh, Biff Sugar yarns uh, that I bought three, four years ago, intending to crochet a huge blanket for a bed, which was going to alternate between white speckled colors and purpley pink speckled colors. Um, so I invested in quite a bit of yarn and I just never got around to it. And I don't know if I'll ever get around to it. I have actually broken into some of the skeins that I bought for this blanket to use for socks and other things um, but I do have a lot of pretty colors and um, I also got some from Granuil because her advent was the first one I ever got and that's what inspired me um, so we'll see because I actually did start uh, a granny striped blanket using her minis in these kind of colors and then I wanted to get more because I wasn't gonna have enough so We'll see what happens in the future. I will cake them up at some point though and then see if it's gonna go into a blanket or used for other things. So this Biff Sugar Yarns, this is 80, 10, 10, Superwash Merino, Cashmere, and I'm guessing nylon. Um, this is the Mountain Hair and I have two of this, I think. And it is really, really pretty. Just a very subtle speckling, mostly with rust. I really, really like them. So they would uh, be really great for socks. So I'm going to put them into the sock bin for now. This dark color, again, not something I would pick for a garment, but for the blanket, uh, this is Perfect. This is the color Nampara. This is a 75-25 superwash merino nylon. So again, it would be good for socks. I will put it in there for now. This is the same base in the color Sentinel. Putting it in there. This is from Grenouille. This is the Rose D'Argent. Dar Rose D'Argent. 75% merino, 25% nylon. And yeah, again, intended for the blanket. It's a sock yarn, I'll put it there. Oops. This one is really, really pretty. Not my typical go-to, but it is stunning. It's white, light pink, and then it has the darker, darker speckles would be some really cute socks. This is Biff Sugar, 7525, strawberries and cream. Putting that in there. Another one of the Rose D'Argent, I got two of them. And this is a Biff Sugar, 7525 in the Belgravia color. So you can see what kind of colors I was going for in the blanket just haven't haven't gotten around to it this is 7525 in the vanity fair from biff sugar yarns again if you are the kind of person who love speckled variegated yarns 
Biff Sugar Yarns definitely has a lot of beautiful colorways. I got these years ago, but I'm I'm pretty sure they're still up and running. And I got a sock set from Woolen Mammoth that time when I ordered from her. This is the Jasmine in the big one. It's the natural sock. And then, I mean, it looks like the Jasmine and then it has this contrasting tone. This set is the Crocus sock set. So definitely putting that in the sock box. Now, so somewhere in here, there's another one of these, but I believe I got three. No, oh, the, the first one I showed you is the one I got. So I did get three uh, skeins of her jasmine on her natural sock base, thinking of making a garment with it, maybe, or maybe just several socks. It isn't as lilac-y in real life as I thought it was gonna be when I ordered it, so I'm not sure if I want to have it as, um, as a garment, uh, so I might just make socks, 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 socks. <sighs> We're getting close to the end. This is so long. I am so sorry. If if you're still here, you love it. If you're not, then you know, you're not here. So you. <laughs> this is a Loni yarn. Beautiful, beautiful color. Is the antique color. This is the Merlin fingering. It's 100% Coriadale, and I can't wait to make a pair of socks with this. This is so bright. Maybe. This year I'll make Easter socks. What do you think? Easter socks? This could also make a really nice hat though. It feels nice. And this is woolen twine again. This is the Corydale sock in the persimmon colorway. So this is more of like a muted orange. So I love the darker side here. It's um, slightly variegated. So you can see this is more bright, but this is really, really, really beautiful. And uh, this is the Wollentwein, uh, is it the Henry color? This is the Corydale sock. I got this in one of those boxes where you get um, tea, yarn, a mug. Um, there was a project bag in there that I use all the time with Henry the Frog. So I think that's why this is called Henry. And this is gonna be a pair of socks for sure. And this is Saloni, the Merlin fingering base, 100% Corydale. And this is the Anastasia's pole color. Really pretty as well. Then I, okay, yeah, this one as well. This colorway in Isoloni as well, Merlin Fingering, 100% Corydale in the Seagrass colorway. And I thought that these two was, were really pretty together as well. So if I don't, wouldn't have made socks, I do really want a pair of socks in this though. I think it's gonna be socks, but it would be some nice cowl color work thing as well. I bought this set from Zakami, thinking of making socks with this when I bought it, but now I'm a bit unsure. It's it's very soft and drapey, so I'm not sure how it would work. This is undyed, 50% baby camel, 50% silk, fingering weight, and the contrast that I got is undyed, super fine, natural brown alpaca. So... I'm not sure how they would work for socks or if if I'll make some accessories with it instead. Some like shawly thingy, cowly thingies. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I have some yarn that I bought from Beaver Slide Dry Goods. This is some mule spun yarn. 
and made in the Rocky Mountains, or the fleeces are grown on the Rocky Mountain and then it's processed in Canada on an antique spinning mule. This is a two-ply sock yarn, 80% brown wool and 20% fine kid mohair. This is the natural sable brown. I also got the juniper heather the prairie fire and the autumn haze and I have three of uh, no four more colors that I've already caked up so I'm gonna go right over now and show you my cabinet where I keep my wound up sock yarns and uh, then we'll get back to this. So I also keep sock yarn in here and this is where I intend for the rest of the um, the skeins that haven't been wound, wound up yet. I intend for them to go in here. So there's a mix of fibers in here. These fibers right here are sock yarns, uh, indie dyed sock yarns all the way far to the to the left here and then in the center these are some very very rustic yarns from Hillesvog from the wild sheep breed and then um, these yarns are the one I showed you caked up with the mohair con or the skeins with the mohair content I've used these already for a pair uh, I believe this is stripy cat yarns I have two two sets with the minis to go and then this is a Norwegian Norwegian yarns this one's indie dyed the rest is the sock yarn from Hillesvog so I have quite a bit of room left in here for the rest of my sock yarns down there on the bottom to the far left right here next to some I keep lavender and cedar scents um, these are indie dyed yarns mostly merino uh, some are superwash, some are non-superwash, but they don't have a nylon content. So uh, unless there's sweater quantities here, I'll probably use them for socks held with silk mohair to make some fluffy, lovely socks like um, like the ones that I have hanging over here. These were the mohair base together with silk mohair for strength, and they are really nice and soft and squishy so yeah so I'm just stuffing my skeins back into this crate and then I'll leave the leftovers in the other crate and then one day things will move from this to the other one as I'm knitting it up So I think we can fit all of them in here actually. Just gonna stuff everything nicely. And we have a basket of sock hanks. And then a small one of scraps. And then we have half a container of the commercial sock yarns. If you're still here and if you're interested I have a basket of mohair odd bits and ends and I don't think I am going to make more of a system of this some things have tags some things don't but they all share the property of either having most of them have a silk core a few of them might have some polyamide but they're all going to add strengths when adding them to a sock and they're all going to add beautiful softness. So I have this, this is from Fable Knitwear. This is her mohair silk in the butter beer. So I have just one skein of this. I could squeeze a ranunculus out of it, uh, but I think I would get more aware of it if I were to add it to something. So it's staying in the basket here together with one leftover skein 
um, beginner, like it's been started. This one I caked up. I got this at a knitting festival in Oslo. This was sort of the Strike Festival's um, their own yarn that they sold. And I got this to pair with a white strand of yarn fingering to make socks. So it's in here. Uh, one skein of this and that. I have one skein of this from Zakami. So just a good, good mix of things in here. And I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go through them today. This video is already way too long, but I might go through my mohair stash in a future video. If this is something you guys like, uh, feel free to let me know if you're here. I'm assuming you didn't hate it. So I could do a mohair stash video, which has grown lately because that was what I was lacking and I do love my silk mohair. I love pairing it with all my other yarns. So if I do a video on that, then I could go through this scrap single, single ball skein situation for you guys. But yeah, that is all that I have that might become socks one day. With that said, I need to clean up the mess of everything that I just threw over there and hang up some stuff that I want to put into the cabinet. And um, I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please give a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and I do hope to bring you more content soon. Bye!